bureaucracy. Okay. All right. Let's continue this conversation on appeal. Let's talk about the Mamamboga and simplify this conversation. How do we fix it going forward? Because they're the ones bearing the hugest brunt. In fact, Speaker of the National Assembly says that uh, as he's blaming cartels for the skyrocketing food prices and he's urging the president to address the matter urgently. Is this all about cartels or what do we do to ensure life is bearable for the Mamamboga? Well, you see, cartels will always be there if there's an environment that's conducive for their survival. Uh, you know, Honore Muturi is a brilliant man and a fine gentleman who one of these days may become president. Yeah, if, of course not this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm sure he knows what he's talking about. But uh, looking at uh, what Honore Mawara is talking about, very good ideas. But Trevor, take it for me that all said and done, we need in, to have in place a government that can create that enabling environment for the economy to grow, for direct foreign investments to flow in. That kind of government cannot be a government formed by Maura's or friends, who, whose, whose philosophy is scorched at uh, uh, policy. We, know, we all know that. So, so, so I think going forward, we need just to go back to basics. And the basics is, uh, first of all, deal with corruption, head on. Deal with the corruption and save the money that is being lost every other day uh, uh, through these uh, networks of corruption. Secondly, invest in the productive sectors of the economy. And they are not. They don't need to belabor them for the economy to grow. Create, an, uh, condu create, create a conducive business environment, as I've said, for investments to flow in to create jobs for our young people, okay? Then the people will have money in their pockets to be able to afford uh, uh, food, okay? Because there's no single day, as the economist here said, that uh, food prices will never come down. What should happen is that people should have more money in their pockets that they can spend on yeah. essential commodities, yes, to live a decent li la 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 life. Yeah. So, so, so it all boils down to politics. If, if in all is said and done. I've heard about the uh, so-called debt commission. I haven't had the chance to read the, the bill as proposed by my friend, Honorable Bobo Yassi Sakwa. But if it is not a constitutional amendment bill, it is dead on arrival. Because if you read the constitution from Article say, 2, 2, 11 all through to, 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 to 14, all that this commission is being asked to do, the proposed commission, <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a mandate of the National Treasury <laughs> under the Constitution, yeah. and indeed uh, buttressed by the Public Finance Management Act. So, so we let, let us not deal with the symptoms. Okay. Let's address the issues at the very, big, at the very basic uh, stage. Uh, and if you want to amend the Constitution, let's just do so. Okay. Okay? BBI had very good proposals, and my good friend Maura and his compatriots shot, were, 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 were happy to have it shut down. Okay? So, so uh, and this has been proved very well. Post the handshake, post the handshake, you see an environment was created that allowed the international community to have confidence, the business community to have confidence in the economy and the country, yeah. and therefore some stability ensued. Okay. That is what has made, made, uh, made us to survive this, this long. In fact, if I can say that if it were not for the handshake, the ripple effect of the Five, the first uh, uh, jubilee term would have been terrible okay. on Kenyans. All right. Terrible on Kenyans. So going forward, let us uh, uh, have a government which is uh, pro people, which is uh, which is uh, proactive, yeah. uh, uh, which 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 is credible, which has got integrity. Yeah. And that government, of course, can only be a government uh, formed by Raila Odinga and his friends in okay. the Zimio La Umoja. All right, Do yes. Doctor Gola, how do we fix this from an economist's perspective? What are the solutions for the nation going forward? If you look at what my friend has said, the failed economist from London that uh, Maura has rubbished, <laughs> you know, there's, uh, you have to look at what is your revenue and what is your spend. This is a simple mathematics that anybody looks at. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if we're looking at how we are spending vis-a-vis -vis the revenue we are generating, there is uh, something there that we must worry about. 
But nevertheless, also Kenyans should not worry too much because the future doesn't look very bleak. The investment we have made is in assets. Look at the legacy of the president, the roads he has built. There will be time when they start uh, bringing in some returns because without infrastructure, because that's the only thing government can do. Mm. Government, like now somebody says, should not dish out handouts. Government can build infrastructure which is long lasting. Yeah. I remember when Moi built Eldoret Airport, mm. people say that was a white uh, elephant. Is it white now? It is not white. <laughs> now, SGR, it's painful that it has spent all that money. But if we look for solutions on how we can make SGR productive, expressway, if we can look for the legacy projects of the present, we're looking how expressway can pay itself and start making money for the economy. These are what I call macroeconomic solutions yeah. that already are in place, so should not worry. Then the second thing now, we go to microeconomic, where Mamamboga actually sits. Yeah. Uh, Mamamboga needs very simple, simple, simple solutions. And these simple solutions have been done before and they have worked. Economy was very vibrant uh, during Kibaki. I usually tell people that if you want to be a good student in strategy or economics, just look at history. Mm. When did we get right? When did we go wrong? There's nothing new under the sun. I'm a church boy, I told you. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 16, they say nothing is new under the sun. Vanity of vanity. So instead of looking very far, let's just look at history. Where did things go wrong? Where did things go right? Let's talk the model of Kibaki. It worked very well. Yeah. In fact, people believe Muhuru for borrowing, but this infrastructure project, some of them were conceived in Kibaki's government. It's just that the time of implementation became painful and we had to borrow money to do it. But after all this said and done, like my brother said, fix corruption. Everybody is an enemy of corruption. And corruption has this thing whereby everybody blames it, but no one really does anything against it. So we need honesty in leadership. And if you compare the two regimes which we are going to get, uh, the possible regimes, the Azimio and Kenya Kwanzaa, let us look at in whose hands is the country safe. I don't want to tell you the direction because I want to remain very, um, very let's say, very, uh, um, I don't want to be biased, isn't yeah. it? But if you look at sloganeering, <laughs> bottoms up, isn't it? Maura should explain to us what is bottoms up. Because according to my understanding about like, as an economist, top down, rich triple down means that you take some money and put this money into businesses which are in the middle class level, like some SMEs, yeah. MSMEs, grow the underbelly of the economy, like MSC, SMEs and MSMEs, like small, medium enterprises and micro, medium enterprises. That's where Mamamboga is. When they grow and become corporates, you are lifting the Mamamboga. And that is triple down. That's why uh, Biden said, you put money into the middle class, you give them some incentives to grow the economy, yeah. because the SMEs are the ones who feed corporate. For example, Nation Media Group, Royal Media Group. If I supply something to a corporate, I actually go borrow money to supply to a corporate. Corporates don't borrow because we are the ones who are their bankers. Mm -hmm. It is the small companies which have no credibility in the economy that borrows. So how can we come with a finance bill, isn't it? To give SMEs a model on which they can be able to access money. And of course, again, reduce government borrowing, which you can't do now because of the high appetite for capital expense, yeah. which is capex. So the, the, the solution here comes in, choose the right government. First of all, anybody listening to me in Kenya, choose the right government. Put your vote where your pocket is. Don't put votes based on tribe. Don't vote because of slogans. Vote where real value is. Then secondly, if the, the next president takes over, for example, Raila Molodinga takes over, or uh, Ruto takes over, let them have solutions to the underbelly of the economy. Yeah. Uh, uh, whatever, maybe you go to the gym. Let me give you a simple, simple example. All men want biceps and big chest, isn't it? <laughs> you cannot train your chest only. You're being told you must have a strong back so that you can train your arms. Then you're being told for you to have a strong back, you must train your legs. So if under the belly of the economy is weak, the legs of the economy is weak, what is up here is like a big iron sitting on clay soil. It cannot stand. And that's what we have at the moment. So the, the triple down economy cannot work for Kenya. 
Uh, and that's what Moara should be telling her how it will work. They try to tell her how will the economy grow when we have a triple down economy? How many people access healthcare? How many people will be able to access education? With the triple down, just like I'll put 50 billion. We are having a problem here where we are, the people are telling us yeah. the lagging variables, not telling us the leading variable. Lagging variables are the things they're going to do. But they're not telling us what that thing will do to the economy. If you put this 50 billion they're talking about, what will the gross economic, uh, national product? What will be the gross national revenue? Yeah. But if you just tell us what you want to put, you are not telling us what we are going to get. Then we lecture on that Kenyans let us be wise because it's difficult to cheat numbers because all about boils down to numbers. Okay. Let's vote with our head, okay. isn't it? Yeah. Let's not vote with emotions. Yeah. And if you're not careful, yeah. politicians will give you misplaced priorities. Okay. Changing the economic model is not the priority Kenyans want. Okay. We want, first of all, to unite as a country, and then secondly, yeah. have the right investment in the right segment of the economy, like I told you, yeah. and we shall have a very thriving nation. Okay. Reginald, what are the final solutions as we wind up on this? I'd like to give you each a 30 seconds for why closing remarks, but start with the solutions from your side. Okay. Um, let, let, let me do that. Um, just, just to respond to Senator Mwawara, um, I've not uh, disputed that you studied here, uh, and you know what you are saying, but that's where the problem is. You are always speaking and not acting uh, and legislating. So let's not talk, let's act. These ideas that you have, legislate them. Uh, out of partisan, out of non-partisan, whatever, let's legislate them. The problem that we have in Kenya in terms of if you're going to get solutions first is to agree what the problems, um, what the problems are, uh, Trevor. The problem that we have in Kenya is that we lack treating symptoms um, and not the root problem. I'll give an example of the expressway. Uh, it's supposed to reduce uh, congestion uh, and traffic. But what is the root problem of congestion and traffic? The root problem of congestion and traffic is because we have rural poverty where everyone is moving away from the rural areas and the counties, all wanting to come to Nairobi, because that's the only place where they can earn an income. So how my solution would be grow the rural economy, uh, spend that money that you are spending on an expressway, in growing a rural economy, you have treated the problem and not um, the, the, the symptom. Um, second, Kibaki's model was good, um, but the problem of Kibaki's model it made the rich people richer and the poorer remained poor. Why do I say so? The people that owned capital got a good uh, return during Kibaki's term. And it has continued that way. But Kenya is a labor intensive economy. That means there are more people that have only labor as their only uh, factor of production. Yeah? But if you look at the wages in Kenya, they've actually had a negative growth for the last 10 years or 12 years. So that means as much as I might have a job, but my job is not paying me enough to be able to live the standard of living that I'm supposed to live, or even save and invest. But if you already own capital, you realize you are able to get richer in Kenya because the system that we have rewards the owners of capital, but does not reward the people that hold uh, labor. A new government that comes into place, as in immediately, uh, the, 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 there is one thing that they have to sort out, which is the debt problem. If no one is talking about restructuring the debt, uh, increasing the tenure of our debt, reducing the interest payment on our debt, they are going to find themselves in a very rude shock yeah, that they will not be able to do anything. Um, and I think the Jubilee government can actually give us that lesson. They came into 2018, the country was also still broke in 2018. That's why they had to go borrow, because there was no money to do all these wonderful things that they wanted to, uh, to do. So I would go and speak to the people that um, our external debt, our local debt, and say, guys, this thing was seven years, we wanted to go to 14, 15 years, it was at 9%, let's extend it to, let's reduce it to 4% for the period, whatever. We just need to restructure our debt because 40 to 50% of our revenue is going to pay debt. So you'll have actually no money to implement most of the promises that you are doing. Then finally, a new government that comes in, we have all these ambassadors in all these countries everywhere. I think the key metric of an ambassador is, have you created a market for the SME in Kenya to be able to export? Because Kenya is a very small economy. Mm. It only has 18 million people who are employed. So if you start a business and you want that business to grow, uh, as Senator Maro has said, you have to look outside the borders. And the yeah. only way you can get access to a market is that ambassador to work and do his job and create a market 
for the guys who are on Gong Road doing furniture to be able to sell their furniture in the US, in the UK, in Malaysia, in Hong Kong. Yeah. Um, or then, because we are not at war, then why do we need ambassadors everywhere if they are not creating markets for, for people? So any government that comes in, those two. Sort out debt immediately, restructure it, yeah. get ambassadors to create markets for your SMEs, and you realize that uh, we will start uplifting people from poverty. All right. Honorable Mbora, I'll start with you on the closing remarks, 30 seconds. Yeah, thank you. I don't know whether 30, 30 seconds is uh, justice for this, <laughs> but Trevor, you may need more time. Just to pick from my friend, uh, yeah, economic diplomacy is very important uh, to uh, the, the country, and that is what we want uh, to join uh, in the bottom up. Uh, the bottom up is also about ensuring that you get credit to the Mamamboga on the ground instead of uh, going to Shylocks who are charging 1,000% uh, per year to about 5%. Uh, the other issue is to make sure that uh, for you to, to ensure that you have uh, a, you know, a strong, uh, you know, you know, you know, productivity. Because Japan, why it has got 200 percent, actually 238, is because they are producing uh, even things like vehicles. Every car on the road is Toyota. What are we producing as a country? J uh, China has succeeded in uh, in ensuring that uh, they, we are, they, we, are, we are buying their goods. But you know, if you have 200,000 containers coming in. Uh, you know, 199,000 something, 10,000 are only going back with goods. So we are really, the roads, Belt and Sick, they have succeeded in doing that. Uh, on the issue of BBI, uh, you know, I think Joe Biden is a, a bottom up trickle, a bottom up middle out. He's, he's not trickle down, a professor. Uh, so he's agreed with us because trickle down is a system of cartels and, uh, you know, deep state and dynasties and things like those, where you have a strong man who is empowered by the constitution, that is what BBI was trying to do. An imperial president who had it all. Uh, so if you look at our proposal, we are also saying increase uh, monies for NHIF by contribution, a percentage of income. Uh, uh, now it's at 38 billion, but 22 billion is going to private sector hospitals. Suppose that money was put into public hospitals. It would be like NHS of London. Uh, finally, to give my condolences to uh, 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 in Ferdinand Moitito for the loss of her, of his mother, 95 year old, I have met a lady, may her soul rest in peace. Also, the family of Steve Machage, uh, Chacha, uh, because of Dr. Machage and Mamotena, South Africa, where I also went to school in Menso Mandela University. Uh, sorry, because we, we love our uh, Nigerian ambassador, but uh, his has to, and also Judy Wamboi Kimani, a Mamamboga, who was in coma at Kayuri Faru, who cannot pay bills uh, in Durai, and she has had to, to rest, may their soul rest in peace. All right. Yeah. When I, yeah, really, uh, as, as we wind up, uh, really what I would want to uh, call upon everyone else to do is to, to try and leave the principles of, of public finance uh, as enshrined uh, in Article 201 of the Constitution. And uh, above all, uh, let's also try to live within our means. Let's cut our clothes according to our size. Uh, this idea of ballooning fiscal deficit it's something we can deal with, yeah, proactively. Yeah. Yes, by by budgeting or what we what we what we can afford, really. Yes. Uh, if we know that revenue level is this much, let's not over, over budget. Let's not be over ambitious. Okay. Yes. Let's be realistic uh, as we try to collectively deal with the uh, the matter of runaway corruption. Okay. Hopefully, in the next few months, uh, we shall have a, a broad-based uh, government uh, uh, formed on the premise of national unity. Yeah, government uh, of Azimio. Thank you. Dr. Gola. My closing remarks is that uh, let us not focus too much on the presidency without looking at all other leaders because in the end all of them will contribute to our economic development mm -hmm. because people like Opio and I has been in, in parliament. The impact of, Nugenya, of Ugunja can be seen. So Very let's good. elect leaders, even as we concentrate on the next president, let's focus on other leaders in all constituencies, our counties and wards. Then my last remark is this. Let us learn from the best. If you go to the US, the Puritan side of the Puritan side of the US, which is the Texas, the Republicans, mostly they are saving people. And they taught their children to save. I have a four-year-old son. I'm teaching him to save at that level, by the way. Let us start teaching from family. For me, I am who I am because of my family. My father was a catechist. He never asked me to beg. He never asked us to borrow. We used to wake up and hard, work hard and save money. That's how I managed to do my, pay my education. And that's the character I have. Every child, if you like, I can teach them now. Save, 
30% of any money you get. If you are given a fare of 100 shillings, walk 30 shillings, save, walk 30 shillings, save 30 shillings, spend 70. And in the end, what you save will help you. Like the youth now, they are very busy consuming. <laughs> they dress to kill. Since they started dressing to kill, no one has died. It's <laughs> them, their pockets are dying. So I ask people to learn how to save, teach how to save, and save, then you'll save our nation. Thank you. Okay, Reginald. <laughs> um, yes, I would like to agree with Dr. Ogola. I, I think as we go, as, as I think hopefully Kenyans are seeing through this discourse, especially in, in, in these campaigns, that parliament is actually a very key institution, number one, for oversight, number two, for your cost of living, more than the, the executive. So if we put in the wrong people in parliament, pay them a lot of money, uh, they don't do their legislation job, and then you turn around and uh, blame an executive or Serikali's idea, we are the ones to blame ourselves. The member of parliament you put to represent you actually has more power than a president sitting at state house. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for making time this morning, Honorable Pio Wandai, Member of Parliament for Gunjan Chair, Public Accounts Committee, Honorable Isaac Moura, nominated Senator, Reginald Kazutu, CEO, Amana Capital, and Dr. Fred Ogora, Lecturer in Economist. Thank you so much for making time this morning. This is a conversation we'll continue having. And most important, thank you for all the feedback that we've received on this conversation. Right now, we're taking a quick break. When we come back, it's time for health and lifestyle. They're talking about epilepsy with Shut Boy. See you in just a bit. <laughs>